psychic tips, an explosive appearance on a tabloid talk show, two failed polygraphs, and a suspected human trafficking ring. The mysterious disappearance of Christina Whitaker has haunted Hannibal for more than a decade. Keep watching for the details. On Friday the 13th of November, 2009, Christina Whitaker was last seen outside of a couple of sports bars in Hannibal, Missouri. The night began at Rookies, located at 611 Broadway on the east side of town. Some accounts say she initially met her friends at the bar and that the evening marked the young mother's first night out since having her baby. But things took a dramatic turn for the worse at roughly 11.45 p.m. Whitaker allegedly got rowdy after drinking too much, and the bartender at Rookie's kicked her out. She started getting belligerent towards me, and I told her, I said, well, we're going to ask you to leave. However, Whitaker didn't give up, and apparently re-entered Rookie's after being thrown out. Bouncer Curtis Rain recalled the incident on the Discovery Plus documentary, Relentless, revealing that two guys had allegedly come in and carried Whitaker out, inexplicably, her friends refused to leave with her. Whitaker found herself inebriated and alone outside on a cold November night. Whitaker's mother, Cindy Young, claims her daughter begged the bartender to speak to her friends, who were still inside the bar, and let them know she needed a ride home. Young was out of town at the time of Whitaker's disappearance. Despite her pleas, Whitaker's friends reportedly still refused to leave the bar to take her home. Christina Whitaker headed next door to the Sportsman's Bar and then River City Billiards, according to Jerry Dean of Missing Persons of America. She begged people for a ride along the way. Both acquaintances and strangers apparently refused Whitaker's request, a strange indictment on America's hometown, as Hannibal is often billed. Of course, there's no way to gauge how Whitaker really behaved that night, apart from eyewitness testimony. However, it's hard to believe that in a town of nearly 17,500 people, no one was willing to help Whitaker get home, especially since she started the evening in the company of so-called friends. Unable to secure a way home, eyewitnesses reportedly last saw Whitaker sobbing and running out the back entrance of Sportsman's. And next thing I know, she darted out the back door and that's the last time we all see her. No one has seen her in Hannibal since. Authorities later recovered her phone just a few yards from Sportsman's, in front of an apartment complex on the 200 block of 7th Street near Church Street. Although Whitaker's frantic night took place in a commercial area with multiple bars, no surveillance video from that night has emerged. Christina Whitaker didn't have proper clothing to ward off the cold of a November night. As reported by The Charlie Project, people last saw her wearing jeans, a pink tank top, a white half sleeve shirt, and white and pink Nikes. She stood about 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighed between 120 and 130 pounds. Whitaker had brown eyes, red hair, and a variety of distinctive scars and tattoos, including a Care Bear with a marijuana leaf on her ankle and a large angel with a raised middle finger on her back. Whitaker lived with her mother in the Oakwood neighborhood, which is roughly a six-minute drive from Rookies, or a 52-minute walk. Prior to her disappearance, she'd been arrested for driving with a revoked license. She subsequently missed a court date on December 18, 2009, and now has a warrant out for her arrest. My True Crime Stories notes that Whitaker was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, anxiety attacks, and bipolar disorder, for which she took daily medication. It's very possible that Whitaker's medication didn't mix well with the alcohol she'd been drinking that night. It's worth noting that interactions between bipolar medications and alcohol can prove incredibly dangerous, very well mind reports. Alcohol abuse can complicate the management of bipolar disorder, drinking impairs your judgment, and makes you more impulsive and increases the risk of suicide, injury, hospitalization, and sexually transmitted infections like HIV. At the time of her disappearance, Christina Whitaker was dating Travis Blackwell. The Las Vegas World News reports that Blackwell received a call from Whitaker at 10.30 p.m. on the evening in question to check in with him. Blackwell had stayed at Cindy Young's house to babysit Whitaker's six-month-old baby girl, Alexandria. You no, know, she did love her daughter. Whitaker told Blackwell she had a ride home and would return around midnight after stopping at a restaurant to pick up food for him. However, Whitaker never showed up. On Saturday morning, Blackwell notified Young that her daughter never returned home. He stayed with the baby until he could find another family member to watch her. For some reason, Young waited until Sunday to file a missing person report, as the Las Vegas World News reported. A 21-year-old girl who was the mother of a six-month-old baby and who allegedly either speaks to or sees her mother daily just ups and disappears, but she wasn't reported missing right away, can seem strange. Whitaker also missed taking her medication, which meant further cause for alarm. Cindy Young described her daughter as mentally fragile, naive, and prone to childlike behavior, per true case files. 
It was also suggested that Whitaker might be dealing with postpartum depression. This characterization of Whitaker's genuine vulnerabilities only serves to underscore her potential for endangerment. It also makes it all the more shocking that Whitaker's friends and family waited so long to contact the police when they knew about her difficulties. You want to protect your kids from everything and I can't protect her from anything. But why wasn't an alarm raised by Saturday night when the mentally fragile woman hadn't come home? Why didn't the friends she went out drinking with contact her to check if she was okay? And why didn't her boyfriend, Travis Blackwell, wait up for the takeout Whitaker had promised to bring him at midnight? The Hannibal Police Department played devil's advocate, claiming that neither Young nor Blackwell acted outside of the norm. According to Captain Jim Hark, it's not uncommon to have a person gone for a day or two, but after that, we start taking a hard look at what's going on. However, the hours and days following Whitaker's vanishing continue to raise a lot of questions. 82 days after her disappearance, Steve Wilkos invited Whitaker's family and friends to appear on an episode of his show titled, Did You Kill Christina? Many previously undisclosed details seemingly surfaced. I want to find answers. I want to know, did Travis have anything to do with it? Whitaker's mother, Cindy Young, accused Travis Blackwell of showing no concern or emotion following her daughter's disappearance. She stated that the 10.30 p.m. call between him and Whitaker likely involved a heated argument. Young also claimed her caller ID showed Whitaker had called again and that other family members in the house heard the phone ring, but that Blackwell allegedly refused to answer. It's unclear why Young's other family members also didn't pick up the phone. One of Whitaker's friends even corroborated the phone call fight during her interview with Steve Wilkos. She said Whitaker got removed from rookies for yelling over the phone and claimed that a history of extreme domestic violence existed between the two. The show culminated with the results of Blackwell's two failed lie detector tests regarding Whitaker's disappearance. And the results for Travis's lie detector tests is that he did not tell the truth. It looked like a slam dunk case until Young rescinded everything. In a Herald Wig interview published after the episode aired in February 2010, she said that Blackwell would never hurt her daughter. She also claimed he had passed a lie detector test carried out by the Hannibal Police Department. Young even corroborated Blackwell's alibi for the evening in question. However, Young's changing opinions only confused anyone hoping for a resolution in the case. After announcing that Travis Blackwell wasn't involved in Christina Whitaker's disappearance, Cindy Young's concerns grew that her daughter had fallen prey to a predator. Christina is childlike. She's very childlike. According to My True Crime Stories, within two weeks of Whitaker's disappearance, an informant gave the Hannibal Police Department its first solid lead. The informant claimed a group of men dealing in sex work and drugs had trafficked Whitaker to Peoria, Illinois. Young started spending time in Peoria, questioning locals about her daughter's whereabouts, and a private investigator also scoured the city for clues. Officer Doug Burgess of the Peoria Police Department stated, We do have prostitution and drug activity as far as the human trafficking we don't see it all that much. Uh, if I've never seen it in my career here. In an expose of human trafficking published in Peoria Magazine in May 2018, Carol Myrna presented a different picture, explaining, Millions of women, men, and children around the world, including here in central Illinois, are modern-day slaves. We have seen with the certainty that the inhumane practice of human trafficking is prosperous in Peoria, Tazewell, and Woodford counties. However, it's currently unclear as to whether Whitaker was a victim of trafficking or not. There have been several reported sightings of Christina Whitaker in Peoria, Illinois, adding fuel to the speculation about her vanishing. It was reported that a waitress working at a cafe near East Peoria claimed she saw Whitaker just days after the young mother's initial disappearance. Plus, a woman alleged that she'd spent time with Whitaker in a local mental hospital. However, according to the Peoria Police Department, there'd been no confirmed sightings of Whitaker in the area. We don't have any confirmation that she is in the area. As for a possible police sighting, the department revealed that a woman looking similar to Whitaker had run away from a narcotics officer after he made initial contact with her. As a result, the officer couldn't confirm the woman's identity. Christina Whitaker left behind her daughter Alexandria, her mother Cindy Young, her family and friends, and hundreds of unanswered questions. On the 10th anniversary of her disappearance, KHQA interviewed Hannibal Police Department's Lieutenant Jennifer Grote. 
Grote has handled the case from day one and has interviewed more than 200 people in connection with the investigation, including individuals incarcerated for other crimes. The family's DNA is also registered through the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, a nationwide database where unidentified remains get matched with missing people. We have worked with about 45 different agencies. About two months into the initial investigation, the FBI even stepped in as Grote revealed to KHQA. They said we had done more than what they would have done in some instances, because some of the leads that we follow up on are things like with psychics and just very strange and odd tips. Users on Reddit have theorized that Whitaker could have drowned, suggesting that there's a significant geographic detail often overlooked in articles about the missing woman. The bars that Whitaker visited on the night of her disappearance are just a half a mile from the Mississippi River, Broadway, the street Rookie's Bar sits on, dead ends at boat slips. The trek from Rookie's Bar to the Mississippi River's banks is approximately just nine minutes. Turning right or left could result in falling off a ledge into the river, especially when drunk and disoriented. Currents in the river prove powerful, making swimming to safety nearly impossible. When bodies end up in the water, accidentally or intentionally, fast-moving currents wash them hundreds of miles or more downstream. Others on Reddit also note the rural nature of Hannibal's setting. Had Whitaker tried to walk home through the woods, hypothermia might have set in. Almanac reports that on November 13, 2009, the night Whitaker disappeared, Hannibal experienced a low of 39.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Eight years after her daughter's disappearance, Cindy Young stated she believed that Christina Whitaker was alive and most likely the victim of human trafficking, as reported by the Hannibal Courier Post. In January 2021, Young discussed the trafficking narrative during a YouTube interview, this time disclosing new details based on alleged street interviews in Peoria. With so many twists and turns in this case, it would be easy to assume the disappearance of Whitaker will remain unsolved. However, a six-part Discovery Plus true crime series called Relentless sheds new light on the case after filmmaker Christina Fontana spent more than 11 years investigating Whitaker's disappearance. Fontana gathered more than 400 hours of footage from video diaries and field investigations for Relentless, exploring every angle from police corruption to human trafficking to organized crime to dark family secrets.